Favorite character from the original? I did love Abet Porter. I thought she was such a bad ass woman. And that's all, all I have to say. Yeah. She was so fun. She was like wish fulfillment D. You know, it's like, it's like that's what I thought that I would be like when I grew up. I thought that's I'd be like wearing suits. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's all happening for you, you know? I think so. Just a few more years, you'll be there. I, I would say Alice. I guess it's Alice. Though I think that our Alice is better than the original Alice. <laughs> Controversial. Dang, like, Marja. That's a hot take. But I, it's a hot take, but I, I stand <laughs> by it. I met Eileen Shaken in a writer's room. We were um, hired to write a, a film adaptation of Sheryl Sandberg's how-to book, Lean In. Um, it didn't work, but I did meet her. <laughs> but I did meet her. You know, I like sort of like failed up, you know? And I <laughs> met Eileen and then the, she, I, I emailed her like six months later when I saw her name in the Handmaid's Tale. Like she was an EP on Handmaid's Tale. So I emailed her and was like, congratulations on your show. She was like, thanks, do you want to come pitch on the L Word? And I was like, yes. I was in grad school, as many people know, not doing an acting thing. I had done one project and I went back to school like, well, did that, all right. I'm gonna get my master's in social work now and that's gonna be my life, which is a great life. It's just not the path that I'm doing now. You know, like I did a self tape from Michigan. Uh, I did a, a callback from Michigan and then I flew out to LA and read with Ari. And then as we got closer, as I did like the Camry with Ari, I left being like, I really want this. Like I was on the plane from LA. It was like three days after my 21st, 23rd birthday. And I'm like, I really want this. And then I think a week later, my manager called me and told me that I, she, she called me and then it said, are you sitting down? And I said, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, here we are, we're here. We made it. <laughs> so Leo had auditioned for me before for another, for a different project, but I, but and he got pretty far. He just like had something that I, it's hard to describe really. It's like hard to describe when you see it, but like there was just something about him. Like I liked that he wasn't an actor. I liked that. He just had this like real vulnerability about him that I could see like through a computer screen, which I thought was like a pretty good sign. So it, it came to me like any other audition does, like in my email. And I just remember, I think I like dropped my phone. I was like, oh my God, they're remaking, like they're rebooting the L word. And I was like, oh my God, I just got an audition for the L word. That's like what was going through my body. The fact that this show was coming back that I had seen and was so um, groundbreaking for me. I, I That was really the only thing that I had seen that was queer storytelling. I, I didn't see anything else other than that. So that was kind of like my North Star in a way, like the only thing that I knew. And I didn't necessarily see myself on there, but I saw queer stories being told and I loved that. So when I got this audition, I was just like, oh my God, this is the most exciting thing that's happened to me in a long time. And I read the material and I felt so connected to Danny because I myself am also like a bit of a type A person and, and um, a bit of an avoidant uh, and whatnot. <laughs> so I was like, oh wow. That is so real. She just she just really said something real. So that's real, so right? Real. Marja knows, she knows. <laughs> I didn't even know this up until recently, but I am that person. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of therapeutic for me, truthfully. It still is like shooting the first season and then shooting the second season. It's still every day felt like therapy. It was really freaking cool. For Ari, I was like, oh God. It was like, I, I, I can like still see her so, so clearly. And like, she was pretty, I felt really certain about <laughs> and like did a, had to do like some convincing. You know, I was like, I, I know it's her. I just like, know it's her. She just doesn't totally know it's her. That, that was what it felt like in the room anyway. I, and, and I actually remember Jennifer after she met Ari, I don't even think you know this Ari. She said, that girl has no idea how powerful she is. We had sort of decided on her and then we were trying to match people to her. So she was there for her own audition. Then she was there for Leo's audition and Rosani's audition and like a bunch of other people who didn't get cast audition. And yep. you know, like she was sort of like the person we were like pairing other people with. The main thing I wanted to maintain was the friendships. It was the first time I'd ever really seen like a group of queer friends, like who were really friends. And that felt real to me. Like I was in college at the time and you know, it, we we all just kind of like find each other, you know, and, and 
And it's hard for like straight people to understand. One of my best friends is one of my producing partners. The way that she describes meeting me, it sounds like a love, it sounds like we're in love. There is this like really intense friendship that sort of lives in these queer spaces that I thought that the original captured well. Um, and I think that, you know, that's like something I wanted to maintain. And then the thing I wanted to change is obvious is, you know, the trans representation on the show sucked and, you know, it hurt a lot of people. And I, I understand that they, you know, were taking big swings and they were the only show to even try. And I do think that they get, they do get credit for that. They do. But like, it, if it's going to come back, it's got to come back and it's got to, you know, got to have Leo. So I was, I was 12 when I socially transitioned when I came out. Um, and I think about like the images that I saw and the images that I've needed. I think the images I saw were better than what they would have been 10 years ago. And I knew that they could also be better and continue to progress. And that can be said of many things that are like progressive and good is like, they can always be improved upon, right? I felt the responsibility very early on, I think. I was like, all right, so Micah is Chinese. Is he first gen, second gen, third gen? What is his, you know, what does he want in life? What is, what is he, you know, what is his, what are his views on X, Y, and Z? And I like, I wanted to know everything about him so I could do my best to convey that because it really it really is like obviously there's no perfect i don't think there can be a perfect you know piece of representation but like if i can do this the best that i can i want to what was so exciting to me about being able to revive the show is to incorporate characters like myself in there who are latinx and and middle eastern like mixed characters and just telling our stories i think i think also something that was really exciting to me was that these stories weren't just limited to to coming out stories, which is what I feel like I saw a lot of when I was growing up. If there was a queer character, it was about whether it was a coming out story or, you know, them being just someone that is ostracized by the, I don't know, just like things that- Their trauma. I, trauma, exactly. Thank you, Leo. And Marja was so great in relaying my specifically like Chilean culture and Iranian culture into Danny's uh, story. And it just, it um, was really special. It was really special. That's like one of my favorite things about this cast is like they really do like live out for people. And it's really is for other people. It's not really for themselves. <laughs> I've seen them grow into like really confident actors, both like in front of the camera and, and during moments like this. And it's just so fun to watch because even though it's just like a silly soap opera that we make, it like actually really does save people's lives. People need to see themselves on television in order to feel not alone. So it, it really is like holding those two things. I think that they're doing just like such a lovely job. The big, big, big finale moment is exactly what you want it to be which one <laughs> what it Sorry. ends on oh that it's yeah. what everybody wants me to write and i just gave it to you because if i don't get a season <laughs> three, i'm gonna be pissed intention in this particular case like does count um i think that the fact that like we are really out there really putting ourselves out there and really hiring people to tell their stories and like this is the honest truth of like where we are in 2021 in terms of like queer culture. It's okay if like that becomes like a bit of a time capsule. It's okay if like that's not relevant in 2031, that, that's okay. But like understanding that like we're trying to get more people to see themselves and just trying to get more people to value other people's experiences. I think that if we can push that sort of agenda of like kindness and acceptance along, then we won. I want to see Micah around uh, more trans people in his circle, maybe, meeting, maybe, or meeting trans people and like trying to not, because he lives with a bunch of cis people. Like, how is he going to navigate? Like, that's a different community for sure. And more Chinese people. I want to see Danny just exploring and having fun and being a little more carefree, perhaps. I want that too. I think, I think that that's actually a good answer that I feel like is not a spoiler, but like, I do think that like that friendship group. I like really want that friend group to come back together. It was it was really fun to have this like love triangle in season two, but I think that finding a way to like bring them together as like a friends, yeah. Friends is is fun too. For sure. I'd love that. <laughs>